Brothers and sisters in Christ, pleasant good day. The St. Mary the Virgin Production Studios presents the second of our training series titled Becoming a Better Reader for Christ. The presenters are Mrs. Dorothy Noel and Miss Tamara Noel. Have you always wanted to read in church, in public perhaps, but worried you were not good enough or fearful of the grammar and unfamiliar words? or just wanted to improve your reading skills. Well, this is a golden opportunity to improve your ability to share the word with others, whether one or one million through Christ. It doesn't matter if God gifted you with a finer voice or maybe a deeper one. We are all God's creation. So take out your pen and paper and enjoy the Feast of Knowledge from the renowned creator of educational material, Mrs. Noel, ably assisted by the multi-talented Tamara. We look forward to hearing you read soon. Enjoy. When Tamara and I were asked to do this project, on improving reading skills in public. I asked Richard, what is the title he and his team had in mind? And he said, either improving reading skills for Christ or becoming a better reader for Christ or dear Lord, I'm afraid to read in public. I passed them to Tamara and she laughed loudly and said that the third one, dear Lord, I'm afraid to read in public, was referring to her, who during her school life and part of her adult life was afraid to read aloud, even though she was a very good reader. Yes, I really feared reading aloud in public. To me, it seemed like the listener was a judge evaluating how well I could interpret and deliver what was written. Would I be clear? Would I be understood? Would I be loud enough? I was definitely nervous. My whole body would shake, but remarkably, my voice was always steady. I knew though that if I wanted to grow personally and professionally, I had to develop the skills that would build up my confidence and courage. I would also follow my three P's, but more about that later. Today in our brief presentation, we will focus primarily on becoming a better reader for Christ by improving our reading skills in church. We will stress how to do it well. We want as many of us to develop the skills so we can feel comfortable to participate. In one of his epistles to Timothy, St. Paul says, Until I arrive, give attention to the public reading of scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 30. So, there's an important mission for Christians, and at the heart of this is the value of reading the scripture aloud. Hearing the scripture being read aloud is hearing the word of God, which is of major significance and is central to Christian worship. Standing between the word and the congregation is the reader who has a spiritual role to nourish the people and to impart the meaning of God's word clearly. As the writer Jeffrey Hardwick says, those who read scripture in public worship give voice to the word of God, testifying to what God has done and is doing in the world and bearing witness to the good news of the gospel. Furthermore, by the gift of the Holy Spirit, Christ himself is present in the proclamation of the word. The reader of scripture has an integral part to play in this awesome event. This is a great honor and tremendous responsibility, demanding deep reverence and appropriate preparation. 
It requires always clarity and enthusiasm. There's a feeling of excitement as one interacts aloud with the gift of God. We first have to think of the comprehension of the scripture that we are reading. Your presentation as reader is influenced by your comprehension of the scripture. And to fully comprehend so that you can deliver well, you should first understand the type of passage. Meditate on the scripture and think about its meaning. Ask yourself these questions. Is it a story, a letter, a prophecy, a law, a song? Is it poetry? What is the tone? Why was it written? What is the mood? Is it joyous or is it sad? Is it proclaiming the glories of God? What message is God sending to us? Let's listen to Acts chapter 2 verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. What is the type of passage that was just read? What is the mood? What verbal picture does it paint? How would you read that passage to answer those potential questions of your listener? Words like suddenly build the rhythm. The simile, like a strong driving wind, is like a musical crescendo growing to a climax. Note how the climactic statement, all were filled with the Holy Spirit at the end, is read. How do you think that would impact the listener? Some of these climaxes in some of the biblical passages vary in intensity, and the reader has to understand what treatment is required. Loud or soft or silence? As the theologian David Gambrell says, Good scripture reading isn't simply the product of a well-trained voice. It takes heart, soul, mind, and strength. Let your reading of scripture be infused with love for the people of God. Remember that the reading of scripture is a spiritual practice or discipline, and that your breath is supported by the Holy Spirit's power. Read with your mind engaged, thinking deeply about the meaning of the words as you say them. And read with your whole body. Stand up straight, plant your feet firmly, breathe deeply, and make eye contact as much as possible. As you approach reading, you should think of the vocabulary within the passage or the poem or the song or the letter. As you focus on the vocabulary, don't just think of the meaning of the words, but what they suggest and how they help the listener form a mental picture. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 reads, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. There is so much to think about in this verse. It proclaims God as constant, consistent, unchanging. It is this quality of God that is faithful to what he is, that allows us to trust him. We can have confidence in God and his word because he never changes. Another means of improving your public reading is a focus on three important areas, pronunciation, enunciation and inflection. We all know that the Bible is full of strange names of places and names of persons and things. 
So we need to get this correct so that your good, clear reading is not affected by incorrect pronunciation and poor syllabification. Look at, for example, Acts chapters 9, 17, 21. Take the time to figure out how to pronounce names like Wenceslas and names of places like Ptolemais, Caesarea, and Thessalonica. You can visit websites such as esv.org or pronouncenames.com that will help you with your pronunciation. Think of the number of syllables in words and stress them at the correct place. There are, for example, three, not two syllables in the word Eucharist, Eucharist, and not Eucharist. Three vowel sounds. Three syllables in the word Catholic. Try now to remember some of these general rules. We should hear every consonant in every word, especially high frequency sounds such as t for t, d for d, s for s, which are generally more difficult to hear. Two consonant sounds which follow each other should be separated as in the phrase this schoolyard and not the schoolyard. Sound out the last two letters clearly in words like wept, Jesus wept, the disciples slept. And of course there is inflection how you use your voice to present the meaning of the scripture in a more expressive way. Breathing, phrasing, pacing, pausing, all interrelated, very important. An important aspect of reading and especially reading aloud is the quality of your breathing. This can impact the phrasing of words, the pacing of your reading, when you pause, your diction, and it will impact meaning. In many instances, certain phrases should be spoken with one single breath to avoid a choppy sound. The Lord sets a father in honor over his children should be spoken with one continuous breath instead of the Lord sets a father in honor over his children. Pacing is very important. Good pacing. Readers should not rush through their reading of the scripture. Remember, the listener is trying to follow and to absorb what you have just read. Read the following passage in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5, which is separated by Mark's to indicate where a slight break is necessary for people to get the mental picture of the words. When God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. In reading, the use of the voice is an important instrument. We think of the pitch and the volume. Decide whether to use the high, middle, or low pitch voice, and whether that voice should be loud or soft. In the following verses in Joel chapter 2, verses 15 to 16, read aloud each phrase with a different voice pitch, volume, or pacing to make it sound more like natural conversation. In so doing, greater clarity of meaning is communicated to your listener.
Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the aged. Gather the children. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the aged. Gather the children. Joel chapter 2 verses 15 to 16. Differentiating between voices. It's a very important aspect of good reading. To distinguish one speaker from the other, spoken words in quotation marks should sound different, thereby highlighting that different persons are speaking. Voice differences are accomplished by a change in voice pitch, volume or timing, as well as through expression of emotions such as enthusiasm, sadness, fear, and so on. The voices should also differ from the narrator's voice. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. He said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 3 and 9 to 12. The importance of practicing aloud. Because you will be reading aloud, you will need to practice out loud. Read the passage from beginning to end until you are confident that you will be able to capture its flow and rhythm. Reading it over several times helps you understand it better so you know what it communicates and how to communicate its meaning. As you practice, learn which words or phrases you will need to emphasize. To help you communicate, you can mark important words, bracket groups of words that belong together, or highlight important connecting words, like but, therefore, so, and then. These will help to guide how you should read. And remember to read with your whole body. Stand tall, which will help you to breathe better. And if you can breathe better, you'll be able to project more effectively. The Ministry of the Word. Remember to get accustomed to the protocols of how to begin and how to end the reading of the word, whether it is the Old Testament or the New Testament or the Psalm. This is usually stated in the lectionary in the church and in your liturgy. Before we go, I want to share my three Ps with you. Along with all the skills we have spoken about in this presentation, these three Ps have also helped me become a better reader. The first P is prayer. 
I pray before I read. I pray to God and I say, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I pray that God takes over and that he will take me through the reading. The second P is practice. Practice, practice, and practice some more. Get comfortable with the reading. Make sure you understand what you are reading. And don't read in your mind, but practice saying it out loud. Double check the pronunciation of words and get the phrasing right. The third P, perform. I have found that experience has helped me overcome the fear of reading the scripture aloud in public or in church. I would encourage you to always try to accept opportunities to read in public or even better, volunteer to read the scripture at church. Think positive thoughts and take deep breaths. You can do this. Yes, indeed, you can do it. And with God's help, you will do it and you will do it well. These tips will make reading the Bible aloud a pleasure for both you and the listener. Thank you, brothers and sisters.